Hi ladies, how are you? Shabbat, <laughs> I mean, Elf Tov. Um, we started talking last time uh, and, uh, in the subject of family purity, okay? We started talking about distances. What does it mean, distances? Um, during the time that woman is a nida, meaning she got a period. Even though it's finished, but she didn't go to mikve yet, usually a woman counts five days and another seven days. So during this time, until she goes to mikve, she's still nida. And during these days, husband and wife cannot get into me, cannot, have, cannot come closer to one another. And we're speaking about these details, why we have so many details that people uh, cannot uh, come close to one another, right? This is what we started last time. We said that this law is from the Torah, and it says that, it says, hello, hi, how are you? It says, ve'el isha benidat tum'ata lo tikrav in Sefer Vaika means whenever the, the woman is nida, she has a period, so husband and wife cannot come close. What does it mean, cannot come close? Anything that will make both of them want to get close to one another, through touch, through a hug, through kiss, through sharing a, a food together, right? All these examples that we gave last time, can cause them want to come more close to one another, and this is uh, things that they should avoid. I would continue, I we just started to speak about three things last time, and I would like to continue talking about more examples this time. But before I start with the examples, I want to emphasize this point even more. Why these uh, restrictions? Why to, to have this distance between husband and wife? One uh, a woman asked me, a distance between men, husband and wife? It's strange. I told her that distances doesn't mean that um, you don't like each other, that you don't respect each other. And sometimes when people have doubts, when they don't trust each other, this is what make people you know, feel apart from, from one another. We'll talk about this thing uh, soon. So there was this driver that drove very wild, okay? He drove so wild, he drove so fast that he hit a pedestrian on the road and Lo Alenu killed him. So they brought him to a judge, okay, to the court. And the judge is asking him, so he recites the accusation to him, he, he reads out the accusation that he didn't stop as he cl came close to a crosswalk, and as a result, he uh, killed a, a person. Does he admit it, uh, or does he have any anything to say for his um, for his protection? So um, he says, "Sure, sure." Says this uh, this uh, driver. He says, "I have a very justified claim, Your Honor." If you were standing in my situation where I was, I was speeding, I was driving so fast, I was driving 120 miles per hour. If you are driving 120 miles per hour, can you stop and not hit anybody? Of course you can, so you can understand me that I couldn't stop even if I wanted because the car was speeding. <laughs> this is forbidden to drive in the first place to huh? 120 miles. Uh -huh. So this <laughs> stupid driver with this kind of uh, acclaim, the judge, instead of giving him only two years in jail, yeah. he gave him five years in jail. Mm -hmm. yeah, this is the way that you're driving. He, you know, he took away a suspended license. Suspended license, I think it's for uh, temporary, for, for permanently, you know. He punished him so severe because of his reckless behavior. Uh, the Almighty, Hashem, okay, He gave us all kind of restrictions in this law, in this mitzvah. And He told us exactly how to conduct ourselves, how, what's allowed, what's not allowed, what's okay, what's not okay. And all this is for us to be able to, so, so, so this mitzvah is going to be possible, it's going to be, it's doable for both of us. And, um, and, um, 
And uh, if people don't keep these fences between both husband and wife during these days, of course uh, they have desires. Of course it's very hard. Of course uh, it could be too hard you know, if they don't keep these uh, fences between them. And therefore, um, and therefore we have to obey these uh, orders because it's for our own benefit. If we want to keep a structure of a family, if we want to have a healthy relationship, and uh, we spoke about uh, these things in the past, it's very, very important. So, so you're in a very hard dilemma. Um, from one side, you understand the importance of this mitzvah. You understand that the, the severity of, 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 of Tarat HaMishpacha. And, and you, with all your heart, you really, really want to fulfill this mitzvah. But from the other side, many women are telling me, my husband, he won't let me. It's so hard for me. It's because of him that I am not able to go to Mikvah or I'm not able to keep it all the way, like uh, not to touch during these days and, 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 and other things. And um, so what do you want from me? I don't want to get into troubles. I don't want to get into endless arguments and all this stress, you know, between husband and wife because of these issues. So what about Shlom Bayit, she tells me. What do you say? What about Shlom Bayit? The Torah is very in for Shlom Bayit. It's so important, the Shlom Bayit, in the eyes of the Torah, in the eyes of Hashem. Hashem is willing to erase his name for Shlom Bayit. We know that sometimes in the time of the Holy Temple, whenever a husband would suspect his wife, if she was loyal to him or not, they would bring him, her to the Holy Temple, and they would test her, and they put the uh, name of Hashem inside the water and the name is erasing and usually we're not allowed to erase the name of Hashem but for purposes of peace between the couple it's okay we know that uh, when Abraham spoke when Hashem spoke to Abraham uh, Hashem gave them the news that she be she soon they're going to be parents soon after so many years when they're old people and Sarah was laughing because you know it didn't make sense and Hashem change a little bit from the truth so that he won't be upset or too upset at his wife. So for Shlom Bay, there is some kind of leniency. Is, is there any leniency in family purity, in the law of family purity for Shlom Bay to make peace no. between her? No, <laughs> there's no such a thing. Why not? Why not? Let's imagine to ourselves that uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, there's a very, very good couple they live peacefully and they understand each other and they love each other very much and everything is perfect between well, both of them. And the husband comes one day home and he tells his wife, you know, a few times already I ate by my brother and he puts this special spice in the food. Can you put this spice too? She looks at this little bag that he brought very suspiciously, well, like, what, what is this spice that he's talking about? And she realizes that it's a very, very dangerous drug mm -hmm. that could be harmful, mm -hmm. that could be dangerous, that bring, can bring damage and, and so on. And she's like, no, I don't want to give, I don't want to put this inside the food because it's not good. This drug is addicting. This drug causes a lot of problems. And he's like, no, no, don't worry. You know what does this drug? It calms you down. Mm -hmm. It brings you to this kind of uh, tranquility and, and peace in your mind. It really coming the at the house, the atmosphere, you, us, the kids, calms down. She says, no, no, it's, it's the drug and it's not good. So what would you say? And from one side, she wants to be a devoted woman. She wants to... Uh, help her husband. She wants to to be a good wife to him. But from the other, uh, 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 and if she's going to uh, insist, if she's going to uh, fight back, if she's not going to do whatever he wants, he's going to fight with her. He's going to argue with her. He's not going to agree with her. The all kind of stress and tension in the house. Who needs this tension? Who needs trouble? She wants peace of peace of mind. So what to do? So here is where a woman is tested. If she uh, wants just some peace of mind, you're not to fight with my husband, she may put this drug inside. Mm -hmm. But 
what damage it could do. It, it, it's not good. But she, if she has responsibility, she won't do that. She knows that, yeah, it could be that he's going to fight with her, it could be that he's going to, but on the long term, he would admit that it was so good that she didn't use it, that it was so good that, that, that um, she didn't put the spice, it's addicting, it's, it's, it's all kind of stuff that it does, and, and it's harmful for the bodies. So, this is, if she, this we, we, we check how, how strong personality or weak she is. If she's weak, she gives in. If she's strong and she insists not to do it, you know, so it, it's for their own benefit. Chazal um, say, Kol ha-makhti et ha-adam yoter kashe min ha-ogo. Whoever makes another person sin, to sin, to make a sin, okay? It's even more severe than killing him, God forbid. Why? Shehahogo, whoever kills him, God forbid, okay? Kills him in this world, okay? And uh, he still have a portion to the next world. But whoever makes him sin, okay? So he kills him in this world and he won't be, and he won't have a portion in the next world. So he kills him twice, this world and then the next world uh, as well. Okay, when you, um, let's, let's, let's uh, try to make it, uh, to, to understand it. If you uh, give somebody uh, drugs, if you make him take alcohol and, and be addicted to alcohol, if you teach him to do bad things, it's not only that, I don't know, from overdose this, this guy dies. Not only this, not, not only the problem, but he doesn't have the next world also because he didn't make mitzvot. Instead, he wasted his time, okay? This is how severe it is. A woman that makes her husband sin in this, in this particular thing, family purity, okay? She causes him, okay? She's causing him very big damage, a spiritual damage, it's called karet. Karet is like mm -hmm. a spiritual death. And she has to be careful. I, I, this is a freaky story that I'm going to tell you, but it's a true story that happened. Rav Mutsafi, Rav Yaakov Mutsafi, told this story uh, in Yerushalayim some years ago. And um, she, she, a woman came to him and she tells him that she dreams of her husband. Her husband passed away. He dreams that uh, he comes to her and he barks like a dog and um, and he wants to choke her Lalino. that's how he dream she dreams it one after another time and another time not only one time that she dreamed this dream and um, she wants to fix the problem she wants to see if maybe she could she should do some some kind of a tikkun what is the problem and uh, he, he told her that if she is going to dream another time, the same dream, she should come to him. So again time it happened, after a week, she comes to him and she tell, and the rabbi is asking her, tell me, what's the problem? What did you do that, uh, that, uh, that he's coming this way in your dream? Tell me some, some problem that he do, that you did. She didn't know, she wasn't sure, but then she told him, that whenever she was Nida, they would touch, they would sleep together, they would do some stuff, and then uh, she wouldn't wait to go to mikvah, and, and basically she didn't keep the law uh, the, the, the right way. And she caused her husband to sin with her. And wh when he died, he doesn't find any rest in the next world. And he can't, and, and so the rabbi explained her that um, he, he's really suffering because of that sin. And he explained her what to do. He told her, your fixing will be, your tikkun will be, if you're going to teach your children, your daughters, not to do the same mistake that you did. Every place you go, if you can explain them how severe is this sin, how people, listen, when people do sins, we don't know exactly, we're not in the next world, we, we don't know exactly what's happening there. But once people come back, let's say, once people, uh, they, they know some Kabbalah and, and some stuff, it's very dangerous what's going on out there. 
So she told him, what should I do? They're not listening to me. He told her, I don't care, you should scream, you should cry, you should, you should try to convince them as much as possible through good way, through, through, so that they would uh, try to take upon themselves to keep the, the laws of family purity because it's very, very severe. I want to tell you, a woman that is available to her husband whenever she's clean and they get close and they get together and everything and everything, the husband won't have this need to come to her when she's not available. Usually the husbands, they, they, they do that because they're not in a way satisfied, because some, some, something wrong in the relationship that he keeps coming to her, especially when she's not available. So, if a woman uh, does it in the right way, she won't come to these kind of situations. So, um, um, every woman, it says, Binayetera, Hashem gave her special wisdom, not just a regular wisdom, Binayetera, extra wisdom that Hashem gave to every woman, more than, she gave, than, than Hashem gave to a man. Again, a woman gets this special wisdom more than a man does. For what? For these type of things. If you want to um, conduct your house, you're supposed to do it with sensitivity. You're supposed to come to, to, come to him and explain him how you feel about that. If, you know, we, we said last time that a man and a woman, they feel different about these things. A man has needs. I, 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 you know, more than we have this need. Women go through all kind of hormones. The hormones change, every month is changed. Whenever a woman gets a period, she doesn't feel this urge, this need to be with him, okay? She, uh, the opposite, she, she wants some quiet time, right? But the men, they don't go through these changes and, and for them it's stable, it's, 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 it's the same thing all the time. And they don't understand these this, this huge changes that women go through every month. So he has his needs and he wants his needs to, to be fulfilled. If you understand that he has greater needs, the way he feels, you don't say, oh, I don't care, it's your problem. You try to tell him, listen, it's hard for me too. I miss you so much. I just can't wait to go to make that. To, to, to come close to one another and so on and so on. Once you see that it's hard for you and you really try to help him, yes, it's important during these days to uh, keep caring for him, you know? You're not carefree this time. Oh, I live in my world, you live in world, your world, I'll do whatever I want to do, you do whatever you, you want to do. No, you care for him, you do things that he likes, you give him the attention. Okay, so physically you won't do it, but there are a lot of other things that you could do. And this is this benign terror that we're talking about. Show a lot of love, show a lot of uh, respect, a lot of honor, uh, caring. And um, once you do it, okay, it's not going to be so hard on him. And one big thing that I want to tell you before we continue with the laws, the harder the law for you, the greater reward that you get. If it's easy for you to do the mitzvah because you were born, let's say, in a religious family or something, so you're mm. going to get a reward. But it's not going to be, yo, something special. Mm. The harder it is for you because of the family, because of the environment, because of your job, because of your, I don't know, stress between you and your husband or, or, or your mother-in-law or, or all kind of problems that can happen, right? The harder it is, the greater the reward from Hashem. So take this in mind, and and Bezat uh, Hashem, and a lot of praying, praying to Hashem, Hashem, help me, help me, help me to go through Him, to help Him to 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 listen to me. Let us go past these days, you know, easy, so it won't be too hard. And once you're praying, Hashem is listening. It's it's great what a woman can pray because she can basically ask anything she wants uh, uh, as she prays. Okay, so we started to speak about uh, some laws last time, whatever a husband and wife, 
cannot do during the time that a woman is nida. And we continue on. It says, um, uh, the next thing, uh, last time, the last thing that we spoke was, uh, husband and wife cannot share together one dish. Why? Because sharing together does bring people close to one another. Next thing that we're talking about is sleeping in one bed during this time. Okay. When I start explaining brides, and many times married women, that when a woman is nida, they are not allowed to sleep in one, in, in one bed, they look to me like, where did I come from? <laughs> what is this law? Why? We're married people. Why can't we sleep in one bed? What's wrong? That's what people do when they get married. So, um, you can imagine, you know, a queen-size bed, for two adults, it's not such a, it's such a big bed. Mm -hmm. you, you, you laying down in your bed, you move a little bit, oh, oh he, he's around and he's feeling you. You have, you have, you have your smells. You breathe, you're so close, you're so available, mm -hmm. okay? How can you not, you know, I don't know, just give a hand for, for a good night, or, or just a hug, or just a kiss, and this is how it starts. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have to be so, so careful in this. I told you last time an example of, 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 of a couple that slept in two different corners of, of the room, but it was one shared bed and how, how problemful it is people say but i have a king size bed but i have i don't know what kind of size but it doesn't matter as long as it's one bed is the easiest thing is to roll from one side to the other and it's so hard for a couple during these days and there's no leniencies in this mm -hmm. you cannot say oh i'm old so i'm okay mm -hmm. or I'm, 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 I'm religious, so I'm fine, or I'm, I'm weak, or I'm sick, or I'm... No excuses. No excuses. I want to tell you, so people, tell, people talk to me, so they saw this movie, right? And they tell me, it all happened one night. They, in Hollywood, that's what they do. They put people, strange people, in a situation where they don't know what to do whether they end up being in one room or uh, or or and that's just let's see how they handle people have desires mm. it's hard for them to hold on and they justify their uh, behavior by what could i do he was available he was the right person at the right time or whatever this is how these things start and we don't want to play with this we have we have a law in Judaism that's called Yehud. Uh, this law came out later in the time of David HaMelech. He had a Beidin and he fixed this law. Maza Yehud. Yehud is a married, uh, a man and a woman cannot get together alone in the house. Strange people, a man and a woman. Mm -hmm. Because once they're alone, they could do all kind of stuff. And we want to make sure people don't do crazy stuff. You know something? Today, we have to teach our children to, to take care of these laws, to, to, to listen to these laws, because if not, all kind of bad things can happen. Now they send these little videos, how to protect your children from uh, all kind of sexual relations, whether it's in school or in the park, or uh, when they go to play by friends' houses, or all kind of stuff. Where is this coming from when we, in a society that everything is allowed and everything is normal and everything is fine? So this is when people come to situations when, you know, God forbid, things can happen. Laws of Yehud, the Torah gives us, get, tries to protect us. The rabbis put fences. What is these fences that we're talking about here? People, just strange people, shouldn't come and be alone in a house or in a place that nobody can reach them, okay? They're closed, they're locked up, because all kind of stuff can happen between them. And, um, and uh, a married couple, 
that in a way have all the whole rights to be together and to be alone and nobody can tell them what to do, right? And still, and still, there are some times that they, they, they should be careful, they should put a gate, they, that they cannot get too, too, too together, too much together. So they're allowed to sleep in the same room, no problem, but just separate beds, that's the only thing. If you have separate beds, psychologically it's already a barrier, mm -hmm. it's, it's already a, a fence, it's already different, it's not the same anymore, because he doesn't feel you, he's not so close to you. It makes it so much easier, okay, when people sleep separately. Some people take it to the extreme. They sleep in different rooms. Mm -hmm. if, they want, if you want it, and it's the only way for you, go ahead. But you don't have to, according to law. The kids ask, you know. And then they're asking. The kids are asking, mm -hmm. yeah, why, mommy? <laughs> why don't you come to sleep today over here? Or, or why the other night? Or and, and, and It's not nice. Even if it's like in a room, if you sleep separately, right? Kids, they're curious, you know? Right. Yeah, therefore, mm -hmm. therefore you have to close it. Whenever, huh? If they're older, mm -hmm. if I heard mm -hmm. it's not recommended to sleep in different uh, rooms. Huh? It's still it's um, husband wife Sometimes. has to have to sleep. Together. It's good that they, even though they cannot, um, they cannot sleep together in one bed. They should communicate. They should talk. Mm -hmm. If they're sleeping in two different rooms, it's like bechlal. They're getting mm -hmm. too much apart from one another, and that's not the idea, huh? It's not healthy. Either. It's not healthy. So um, it's the easiest thing to, to, to feel to, you know, there was this uh, two uh, doctors. They were marriage counselors. Doctors spoke, and another man. I don't remember his name. And you know, marriage counselor means people come, married people come with all kind of problems, and and they ask what to do in all kind of situations, and they complain about their spouses and, and everything. And the doctor would suggest, you know, something. So separate for a while. Mm -hmm. They would separate for a while. Uh -huh. Okay, and then after a week or two, they would come to the doctor again. What I'm missing. But it's okay. But it's not so bad. Mm -hmm. But but and then they would get together again and, and, and be good for a week or so and then again start complaining, complaining, complaining. And he didn't understand what is this, you know, it's like a rhythm, you know, some some and then he was introduced to uh, this uh, Jewish law that says that, that, that they told him that when Jewish people, when the woman, she gets a period, it's not that they have to sleep in separate apartments or something. They just don't get intimic, physical, that's it. And he saw the beauty of this. Because when people get uh, separated, they get used to it. Mm -hmm. A woman usually at home does much more than a husband does. And she's like, who needs, in a way, God forbid, she may think, who needs this headache? She gets used to be alone very fast. And it's not good. It's good that they lean on each other. It's good that they need one another. It's good that they share their thoughts, their fears, their, their whatever, whatever. It's very important to be connected all the time when you need that, when you're not need that. So, um, so, um, and, and I told you last time, there was this example of a woman that kept, kept telling me, but I never heard of this law and I was fine till now. Even though she was fine till now, one day it can happen. And one day they, they, they come from a wedding, uh, he was drinking a bit, she was drinking a bit, they're both high, they feel too good, they feel whatever, whatever, things can happen. And we don't want to come to this situation when God forbid, God forbid, they do a sin. Religious couples, okay? So uh, we try to be <coughs> careful. So, so how you fix that thing? So that happen? If okay, so every uh, sin that a person does, there is a chuva. Chuva means a, a way of repentance. A way of repentance is that a person understands that he did wrong. Number one, he understands that he did wrong. He takes upon himself not to do it anymore. Number two. Once he comes to the same kind of situation, he works on himself and he doesn't do this, this uh, sin anymore, this is how we know that uh, he overcome this sin.
But if that happened, do you have to go to uh, Mikwa after or no? Sh yeah, so we'll, uh, yeah. Um, it's going to take some time, you know, but we're going to speak about mikveh, when and what, and details about mikveh. I don't really talk about mikveh yet, we're still talking about... No, the question is, does she have to isolate herself? Continue isolating isolate, herself, right? because as long as woman is nida, uh, she didn't go to mikveh yet, she is still not pure until the mikveh. Okay, so therefore, they, even though, God forbid, let's say if this mistake happened, they still have to separate afterwards until it's time for her to go to Mikva. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so this is uh, regarding uh, beds. So usually, um, 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 when people separate beds, so the question is practically, so what do we do? Rules are not so big. How, what, what can we do exactly? So some people, they have a queen-size bed, let's say, and uh, they can add another matching bed or, or, you know, in the side of the room, always in the corner somewhere. Sleeping mattress. Hmm? Sleeping mattress. Sleeping Air yeah. mattress. Air mattress. <laughs> Air, mattress. <laughs> Air mattress is very convenient usually, you know, you, you blow it, uh, it's uh, electric, and, and, and then you store it away, it doesn't take so, too much room. It's also a possibility. Some people have a, a, a folding, a folding bed, futan, uh, futan mm -hmm. in the bedroom. It's always convenient to even to lay down or to rest or something. I have uh, somebody that I know. They have a huge bedroom, so they have two queen beds, like they have in the hotels. Two queen beds they it's have the separated. And uh, it's up to them what they want to do. And uh, and some, because the beds are not so big, and the, I'm sorry, the bedrooms are not so big, so they buy uh, or a twin size or full size bed and they put it together or separate it. Now, regarding the children that you asked before, it's not recommended that they can get in your bedroom anytime they want. Bedroom of Parents have to be close to them because they're not allowed to know what's happening between the parents. They're getting older. They're not two, three years old anymore. They're getting older, and you have to be careful with this because uh, as much as you try, as much as you try, not always you can hide the fact when you go to make or, or and, and they understand and they're smart and, and, and it's not it's not appropriate when they know when and what and how and, and so on. So every day, one of my children has bedrooms in the middle of the night. Mm -hmm. She can't. I had a bad dream. Okay, the other one. I had a bad dream. Like cockroaches all went all over me. Can I sleep with you? Every night, somebody. <laughs> and, and and this is because you do let them sleep with yeah. you. So that's the problem. If you don't you let them at all, they they learn how to you overcome. Can't it. to sleep with you. They, they learn how to overcome it. They don't need it. They, they come to you constantly again and again because you let, you let it happen. Yeah. So When we live in an apartment, it's hard. Because uh -huh. it's the same floor yeah. uh -huh. and the room is right there. Uh -huh. So it's hard to, not to let them go in there. <laughs> but uh, nevertheless, uh, they, they, they cannot come there. They have to knock the door. If, if you're sleeping already, it's good that it's locked and they, can, they should knock. And, and then you, you come out and you help them out, whatever, and then you go back to your room. Because it's not nice when they see what they see. I mean, they don't see it, but my, my kid, he's five years old, he has fears. Every night, two o'clock, three o'clock, he comes pick up my husband. He comes, he takes him, I will never sleep like the whole night together. And it's so, uh, like, like now it's a little bit again devastating. I don't remember like sleeping with him the whole entire night. Right. And I cannot do anything about this. He just has bad dreams. He screams at night. He yes. So you have to take care of that. You know, you have to see what you can do about this. I mean, I spoke to Rabbi. Mm -hmm. He gave me something to put above his uh, bed. pillow. Pillow bed. But it doesn't work anymore. I mean, it worked in the beginning. You know? mm -hmm. 
it's good to take care of the problem because yeah. regular children should not get up screaming in the middle every of the night, night and yeah, not every night. Yeah. And so it's good to take care of that. But, and, and you see what it happens, it happens that every night, you know, it's a torture for both of you. Mm. And uh, some, some people, they just cannot fall asleep because they expect already the, the <laughs> knock or the scream or whatever. And, uh, and it's, not, it's not good, so it's good to take care of it. It's gone over already for two years. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. How is it during the day? Fine. No, everything is okay. You get attention, no, uh, you get the maybe, attention. Uh, maybe you should not get him excited towards the night. Don't get him too excited towards the night. Maybe mm -hmm. the, uh, does he watch certain Cartoon. maybe cartoons or something, you know? Maybe yes. don't get him. That's mm -hmm. why it's always stimulating. Yes, that's true. Mm -hmm. The fear. The cartoons are scary. A lot of the cartoons are scary. Unfortunately. <coughs> Yeah, I told my husband to keep it in, in, in mind him when you say Shema. Talking about hands. talking mm -hmm. about fears, let him let him express himself and how he feels about certain things, because okay. these things, you know, if he keeps it inside, this is when it comes out uh, in the middle of the night. So um, try not to let uh, the children in because the uh, so bedroom is always supposed to be private for both of you. So well. you're saying that our room has to be always closed? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are you serious? Yeah, she's oh, wow. closed, but the kids will yeah. do. She doesn't know what they will do. <laughs> what? She's she not going to hear them? Yeah. <laughs> no, don't worry. You're going to hear them. No, I want to hear my kids. For what? <laughs> what are you doing? Okay, my daughter has a habit of in the middle of the night to go downstairs to walk around, even it's dark, and it really scares me why she does this every night. Like, so are you running after her every night? <laughs> I, I'm like, hello, what are you doing? She, uh, she's sleeping while like she's okay. walking around. Uh, she's mm -hmm. sleepwalking? Like okay. sleepwalking. And then I tell her in the morning, why? Oh, I was uh, scared. I have a neighbor, he has one hand. She always sees him, she gets scared. Uh -huh. And she always thinks that he's somewhere there. Oh. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, and I'm like, why are you scared? Oh, I was just looking if he's there. Mm 